Ed Dow Lisa will be leading this panel of speakers to take us back through the years. We'll introduce the panel. Youth of the Year 1952, Ralph Slavens. <laughs> Youth of the Year 1965, and Executive Director 1985, Tom Hoff. Executive Director, 1985 through 2002, Bill Stallman. <laughs> Youth of the Year, 1999, Jessica Green. And 2013 Youth of the Year, Alicia Greer. All right, we had quite an illustrious panel up here tonight. We thought it would be fun to just ask them a few questions. And I think there are a couple of microphones there on the table. And uh, we're going to just start, uh, Ralph, with you. Uh, I, I know you were a club member in the 1940s and the 1950s, as I've been told. And you were actually our third Youth of the Year, as I understand it, which is quite, quite an honor. Could you just tell us a little bit about your recollections of those times? You mean, oh, this is on? Yes. Yes. I, uh, what I loved about the boys club, it, I got them against girls, but there was no girls then. <laughs> I like girls, that's all right. Uh, when I went over there, it was a good place to go, it was safe. It was a good spot on Commercial Street down below, down east. I started on, on Division in the old two-story house <coughs> before we went to Commercial on there. And it's, uh, it's always been a wonderful place. It's good for kids. When I was a boy, Springfield was 34,600 something. I know that for a fact, I went to the Army and had to hitch over to Joplin. It was, it was at College Street. The sign said 36,000 something, it said Joplin, 38,000 something. I think we've kind of bypassed it. We're now 175 or 80,000. But my life and my times in the boys' club has been wonderful. Uh, had, I've been blessed in my life, had a wonderful mother who taught me and helped me and always told me if I wanted to go. I lived about four miles from there. We never had a car, I was one of 11 children. But going up there was a wonderful experience. I had a good thing in my life when I was going to the board of the year. Uh, Jim Morris over his wonderful father, H.H.L. Morris, I got to go to the boys camp. It was $15, and let me tell you, that was a lot of money for one of 11 kids and didn't even have a car. And his father paid my way. Jim, thank you. I'll tell you that publicly. He had a wonderful father. And I'll tell you that Yes, that was, that was fabulous. Thank you so much, Ralph. Tom, you're next. Now, you were Youth of the Year and also Executive Director for a time. And, and I know that Bill Henderson had a tremendous impact on you. And, and you've had quite an illustrious uh, career as well within the Boys and Girls Club. So I was wondering if you might share with all of us tonight just a little bit about Mr. Henderson and also about how the club has helped you succeed. Okay. This, uh, this is always good to talk about Bill. Uh, if you got to know Bill, you uh, learned to love Bill because Bill loved all of us. Bill had an uh, open-ended love that no matter how many mistakes we could make, he put the hand very sternly on the back of your neck and said, you go fix it. And he taught us so many times that if you did it wrong, it's okay. You get back up and go in. I, I started going to the club when I was 11. And when you go into the, the old unit there on commercial, and you walk in all big glasses, and you know, at 11, believe it or not, at that time, I was a very small person. And seeing pictures of me back then, I was standing below the shoulders of Dan Plumkhauser, for those of you that remember him, so that made me very short. Uh, but the thing about it is, is that I walked in, and a lady named Mrs. Summers introduced me to Mr. Bill Henderson, and Mrs. Summers was on the auxiliary was my next door neighbor whose window I had broke out. And so she introduced me to Bill and I turn around and I look up to this and look up to this and look up to this. And I say, yes sir. And he said, well, come and have a good time, you know, and this is summer left. And Bill says, come on, I got something for you to do. I know this will fit you. And he takes me over this little closet and hands me a broom. He says, now you can keep sweeping until you get that window paid for. <laughs> and so that was my first 45 minutes with Bill Henderson. And believe me, uh, 
I just finished 38 years with the Boys and Girls Club in February and retired. presence of mind of what the Henderson taught all of us. And that is that you never give up on children. You never give up on the opportunity to make life better for children. Bill was so humble that he never took any credit for what he did, but he always had a way of putting the right people in the right place for those things to happen for us. You referenced Christmas parties. Uh, you, he used to make sure the ones of us that needed it always got to go to the Kiwanis lunch, got us out of school, took us down, we had a hot meal, got a t-shirt and a bag of candy. And we, when we go to camp, we still do a reunion camp, we get around and we talk about those moments that Bill helped create for us. And you talk about innovative people and that. When Boys and Girls Clubs were kicking Boys clubs out for serving girls. Bill Henderson was serving girls back in the early 60s. And I asked him one time, I said, Bill, why are you letting these girls in? And he says, because the brothers are going to have to stay home and babysit them, and then we lost them all. So this man was forward thinking way back then, and he did so much for this community. All of us that grew up under him, I've seen a lot of our old friends, guys that were like me, that Bill had been in. We just can't say enough thank you. Most of all, he would sit here and he would say thank you all because you made it happen so that he could make things happen for us. Thank you all very much for what you do for the kids in Springfield today. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much, Tom.